Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 10th. I asked last week uh, when I did my gift giving TDD report, I asked for suggestions from the viewers and to leave them in the comments. And I got some really good suggestions here. And I will go over uh, the specific people that had uh, suggestions of uh, gifts to give to somewhere in the range of $25 or less and uh, all of these I've found at least uh, some version of them on Amazon so the links will be um, if you check down in the description below you'll see the links to be able to uh, get to these items first my buddy Robert Bangalore Bobble he said he uh, found a good gift to give uh, and he's actually bought it himself as a gift for somebody is the Nightcore tube keychain light 45 lumens around 11 bucks um, I should have thought about that myself because I've got an EverReady um, same kind of thing to an LED light just attached to my keychain and I tell you what so many times when I forget to bring a flashlight along or I unexpectedly find myself somewhere where it's dark and I can't see that has been such a great help so the ever ready flashlight or this one there's various I mean you don't need to even stick to these when you go to Amazon as you know they suggest other uh, versions of things too so keychain flashlights are uh, there's hundreds of them to choose from same with everything else here uh, bandit nev my friend from Australia suggested a Bluetooth speaker, and there's lots of them, too, in the $20, $25 range. Um, when I just looked them up, uh, the Amazon Basics Bluetooth portable speaker was rated pretty highly. I think it was something like four and a half stars or something like that. And plenty of selections, too. You can even, if you want, on the left-hand side, when you search for Bluetooth speakers, you can even search for a price range, say, and you want under $100, under $50, something like that. So I just did a quick search of Bluetooth portable speakers under $25. And then my friend Craig N. said food or fruit basket, especially hand-picked or customized to the recipient. Now that brings me to mind of something I saw at Walmart a few years back and they never brought it back, but it was, uh, it looks similar to an Easter basket, but it was a food basket and it also had either wine or soda pop or, or different drinks and stuff like that and a DVD movie included. So it was kind of like um, treating somebody to a, a movie, uh, drinks and some snacks or or food of some type like that so putting together something like a Christmas basket that would be similar to an Easter basket especially throwing in a DVD movie yeah custom made baskets now if you're the crafty kind now me a lot of times I'm in a hurry at the last minute so I don't think I'm quite the kind of person to put that together although you never know you know if you have enough time and you know what that person might like as far as a movie or food or something like that putting together a custom basket could be a good thing and then my friend Rex, Lone Star Rider, Key Tracker, Phone Finder. Um, those are those little discs about the size of a quarter. Some of them are square-shaped, oval, uh, round. And, uh, yeah, you just put it on whatever item that you think you might lose track of or something like that, and it communicates with the Bluetooth on your phone, and it'll emit some kind of a beep or something like that. Um, sometimes it'll give you an alert when it gets out of range, too, if you're too far away from it. It'll give you an alert on your phone. And then uh, last off, my friend Mary J, infrared cooking thermometer. Now, I did look up just uh, ordinary cooking thermometers now. Uh, the one that I have, I have an infrared, just a plain infrared thermometer. is isn't necessarily called a cooking. But I couldn't really honestly tell the difference between the infrared thermometers and the cooking infrared contact thermometers. They all look pretty much the same. It's just that the cheaper ones were more industrial looking, whereas um, you could get a Cuisinart for about $10 more. So instead of $15, you'd pay uh, like $25, $30, bucks and it would, you know, it would look a little bit nicer in your kitchen, I guess you could say. But other than that, I don't see a lot of difference between the different infrared cooking thermometers. But yeah, um, contact will measure anywhere from uh, a lot of good out to like minus 50, minus 60 degrees to 700 degrees. So plenty good enough for cooking. And if you don't care about it looking a little bit industrial or something like that, you can probably get a good one for about 15 bucks. I think when I first bought mine, I think mine actually was a fluke one that cost a uh, I don't know, I think it was about a $100 one, and I think I got it wholesale or something from my buddy for 50 bucks. but they were rather expensive years ago, but now, I mean, you can find them, you know, easily under $25, or around $25, like I said, if you want a nice one that would look good in a kitchen, and you're concerned to spend the extra $10 for looks. So, uh, thank you, everybody that participated by giving your suggestions. They're all excellent suggestions, and then, um, this week has really been, uh, really good for, uh, having people share things for me for the TDD report. Um, two different mics shared stuff with me this week. Uh, first muzzle mic, uh, this is from Engadget. Virgin Galactic's new spaceship completes its first glide test. Virgin Galactic just came closer to resuming its dreams of private space flight in the wake of its tragic crash from 2014. The company has successfully conducted the first glide test flight of VSS Unity. 
better known as Spaceship Two. The vehicle was only flying free for 10 minutes and never traveled faster than Mach 0.6, that's 0.6 times the speed of sound, but it was enough to get a healthy amount of data illustrating how Unity behaves in real life. So they're looking forward to maybe seeing more powered flights in 2017, but not releasing any schedule as to whether, you know, as to when exactly they're going to be taking people up in outer space. As usual, for safety considerations, you got to be kind of slow going with that stuff. And then another friend of mine, Michael M., uh, shared this on Facebook, so thank you, Michael, for that. Once in a lifetime find, dinosaur tail discovered trapped in amber. Yeah, this uh, scientist just happened to be uh, shopping for uh, amber pieces, I, sp I suppose looking to see something that he could find, too, of interest. And uh, in Malaysia, at a flea market type deal, this uh, paleontologist found the specimen, and uh, they were the people that were selling it thought it was a a plant, a piece of plant material in this amber, but the uh, the paleontologist obviously knew that this was from an animal of some type. And uh, yeah, if you look at the uh, picture of this thing, you can tell obviously it looks kind of like feathers. And uh, I get well, I'll just read it. The the tail of a 99 million year old dinosaur has been found entombed in amber, an unprecedented discovery that has blown away scientists. And I'll probably slaughter this name, but I think it's Zing Lida. A Chinese paleontologist found the specimen the size of a dried apricot at an amber market in northern Myanmar near the Chinese border. The remarkable piece was destined to end up as a curiosity piece of jewelry, with Burmese traders believing a plant fragment was trapped inside. I realized that the content was a vertebrate, possibly theropod rather than any plant, Zing told CNN. I was not sure that the trader really understood how important the specimen this was, but he did not raise the price. So. Uh, and if you look at this article too, you'll see that um, they're depicting an artist rendering of what they thought this dinosaur looked like. It was obviously a small dinosaur. People don't realize most dinosaurs were about the size of a chicken. They were not, you know, there obviously were huge dinosaurs, but they were not really the uh, bulk of the dinosaur population. They were more uh, average size, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the size of a small dog, something like that. But the appearance wise, um, we're going to have to kind of change our ideas about that because thinking they're all like alligators with scaly skin and stuff like that, it seems more and more uh, we might be, uh, if we could actually travel back in time to that era, they might look a little bit more like different sized ostrich type birds um, because of the way this uh, uh, thing is going with the amber and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, that's about it for this week. Uh, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.